Benjamin Easter, the leader of the local gang of youths, has brought a civil action of malicious prosecution against Sergeant Goss of the Toxton Police Force. He alleges that Goss beat him up on an evening in March and subsequently brought a prosecution against him for assaulting a police officer. The case has divided the village folk of Grattan St Peter's and the inhabitants of the new council estate and is being heard in Fulchester because of local feelings in Toxton. In the witness box is Francis Larwood, who lives in the village itself. Grattan is a very quiet, beautiful village, and some of the most beautiful countryside. And those old folks there have retired and, and one want their peace and quiet. And the price they have to pay for a cottage nowadays, they deserve it. But all of us are having our peace and quiet ruined by the, by the selfishness of these thugs. And, th and that's what they are, and I make no apologies for saying it. Yes, but Mr. Lord, are you quite sure that the noise that you complain of isn't just the noise that you would get from riding a motorcycle in the ordinary way? Absolutely certain of it, sir. So you're not against the motorcycle as such? <laughs> it would be funny if I were. I ride a motorbike myself. Against it. I rely on it. And that's why I know how unnecessary all this noise is. I ride a motorbike and sidecar. I come into the village along the Moulton Road, go through the village itself. As soon as I get to the first set of cottages on the right-hand side, I just switch off the engine and freewheel the rest of the way. I slip in quiet as a mouse. Well, even my wife don't hear me come home often as not until I go through that gate. That old gate makes more noise than I do on my bike. Uh, yes, Miss Flower. Now, would you describe to the court any particular incident that caused you to call out Sergeant Goss? Well, there's many. One comes to mind, though, straight away. One of many, that is. You, ladies and gentlemen, have got to understand that I am not some old crotchet that goes to bed at nine and, and doesn't want to hear another whisper until I get up in the morning. Nothing like that. I watch the telly till close down, often as not, so it's not that I go to bed that early. Well, uh, I was at my house this particular night. Uh, it was a Saturday night. Uh, and it must have been about just after 11, because I'd been in bed about 20 minutes. And then this bike comes roaring down through the village, right past my bedroom window. It was like living beside a racetrack. Well, I cursed it the way I do now, but, but I thought no more of it. Fifteen minutes later, again. And that went on at quarter-hour intervals, regular as the church clock. Well, three more times, and I had had enough. Now, I knew they'd still be awake next door. Well, that's Mr. and Mrs. Slater. And I said to them, well, if you won't ring, I will. Uh, I don't have a phone myself, and it's necessary to use the neighbor's phone. Uh, which, of course, they don't mind, because uh, we have a common interest in this. You mean they also suffer from these disturbances? Well, of course they do. How shouldn't they? Well, why don't they phone Sergeant Goss? Well, they, 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 they say they don't like to. Well, Miss Lauder, are you the only person in the village who calls out Sergeant Goss in this way? Oh, Lord, no. No, that very night, the one I was just saying. <clears throat> I was on the phone for him, and he'd already left. Or someone had got in there first, and he'd already gone out. And has Sergeant Goss always been willing to come out to these calls? Well, ever since it got really bad, he's been well, and yes. You, in fact, rely on Sergeant Goss for this sort of protection? I do. The old village does. He's a friend in need. It really amazes me to think that a man who's done so much good for the village should end up in the dock for it. It really beats me. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Larwood. Mr. Larwood, how many times have you called out Sergeant Goss yourself? Oh, well, uh, ten or twelve times easily. And from his home or the police station? Uh, both. At night, we ring him at his home. Has he encouraged you to do this? Well, he's, he's, he's always been very willing, very helpful. And he's an ally. And we go on turning to him, and we're very grateful to oh, him. Oh, I'm sure you are, Mr. Larwood. Have you ever been present when Sergeant Goss arrives? Have you ever seen him coping with one of his cases? No, there's been no cause to. Have you ever been in the Glade when he's made one of his routine checks? <laughs> I've no occasion to be in the Glade, none at all. Have you no friends there? No. But you do consider it part of the village? Well, it is, isn't it? It's not whether I consider it to be, it is. Oh, geographically it is, Mr. Larwood, but then is it part of the village in spirit? Ah, now you've lost me. Yes, I must confess you're rather losing me, Miss Tate. Is it really re relevant whether the glade or the estate, as you seem to prefer to call it, is part of this village or not? It is only relevant, my lord, if there is a rivalry or natural friction between the two sections which is found battleground in this court. Yes, I see. Continue. My lord? Mr. Lawwood, you say you ride a motorcycle. That's correct. Do you ride it for any other purpose than getting from one place to another? What other purpose is there? Well, purely for pleasure. Well, I enjoy it well enough. Now, you say you enter the village and you turn off your engine. That's right. And you freewheel to your front gate. That's correct. Are you aware that you could be charged with driving without due care and attention? 
For freewheeling? For freewheeling. No, I'm not. Well, I assure you, you could be, and that, therefore, you will understand that under the circumstances, the boys did not follow your example. I've never heard that before. Are you not one of the hardcore who are in constant and continual complaint to the police about the behavior of these boys? Well, there's a group of us, yes. How many in the group? Well, I... It's nothing formal, you understand? There are ten or twelve, regular. What would you say was the population of Grattan St. Peter's? Uh, 700 thereabouts, uh, uh, 720, I think. And so out of a population of 700, 10 or 12 people regularly protest, is that correct? Well, there are others. Thank you, Mr. Larwood. No re-examination, my lord. You may stand down, Mr. Larwood. I call Susan Goss. Miss Goss, would you like to sit down while you give your evidence? Right, I'll stand. Very well. You are Susan Goss of Apple Tree Cottage, Summerley, near Toxton, and you are the daughter of the defendant, Sergeant Goss. Yes. And Miss Goss, I shall try not to keep you too long. Is your relationship with your father a happy one? Yes, up and down. Now, was it up or down when you were going about with Benny Easter? Oh, it wasn't too good. Did your father object to you going out with Easter? Well, he didn't stop me. Except for going to dances, but then he wouldn't ever let me go to dances. So he certainly hadn't forbidden you to see Easter? No. Oh. Now, what do you think worried him about your relationship with Easter? Oh, he said he didn't like me going on the back of the bikes. He thought it was dangerous. He wanted me to wear a crash helmet, but I wouldn't. But this is before crash helmets became compulsory? I suppose so. I didn't know they were. Now, Miss Goss, have you now broken off your relationship with Easter? Yes. Uh, Miss Goss, would you speak a little louder so that the jury can hear you? Yes. And was this your wish? No. Did he give you any reason why he wanted to break off the relationship? He said it wouldn't be possible anymore. This was after his acquittal? Yes. How long afterwards? Six days. Tuesday. And that was just after he decided to bring this action against your father? Yes. Now, Miss Goss, you were pregnant by Easter. Yes. Are you certain that he is the father? Yes. Absolutely certain. Mr. Lloyd, you so must confine your questions to those bearing on the issue of malice. Uh, my Lord. Miss Goss, do you think that your father knew about your pregnancy before he arrested Easter? No, he didn't. You're sure? Yes. I know I hadn't told anyone except him. You mean Easter? Yes. One, one last question then, Miss Goss. Do you now feel that Easter was using you to get at your father? He was, yes. Thank you. Miss Goss, when did you realize that, as you say, Easter was using you to get at your father? Afterwards. Afterwards, I see. But before that, you thought that Benny Easter was absolutely sincere? Yes. Now, if he was so sincere, why did your father object to you going around with him? Because of the bikes. You mean he liked Easter except that he rode a motorcycle? Well, I don't think he liked him, but... Well, why do you think he didn't like him? Sorry, I... Did your father say things against Easter? No. Well, um, did your father ever talk about e Easter, even to mention him, apart from the bikes? Occasionally. And what did he say on these occasions? Oh, Approximately. Well, uh, he'd say maybe not to um, make so much noise, not to talk too loud outside at night, those sort of things. Didn't he ever suggest you brought him in to meet him? No, I didn't. He knew him. Now, when you found out you were pregnant, Miss Goss, how long was it before you told Easter? About two weeks. And did you tell your mother? No. Did she find out? I don't know. She may have. She appeared to know, did she? Sometimes I thought maybe she did. Then, do you really think that she said nothing to your father? Not as far as I know. He'd have been certain to tell me. You were frightened your father would find out? Yes. Why? He would have been angry. I thought... So you agreed with Easter to break off the affair until your father had got a little more accustomed to the idea? I see, Miss Goss. No, it wasn't like that at all. Miss Goss, just for the record, did you just say, no, it wasn't like that at all? Yes. Thank you, Miss Goss. Mr. Horry. 